Hi everyone, and welcome to this series on how to do open source investigations from home. My name is Ben, and I'm really excited to share these videos with you. This is part one, so let's get started. Through these videos, I'm going to share tips and tricks in open source intelligence, investigations, and just good old plain research. So that no matter who you are or where you are in the world, you can do any of this from home with publicly available information to answer those important questions such as who, what, where, and when. I like to focus on using practical case studies, so you'll see plenty, like this one where we take a video, create a panorama out of stills in the video, and use that to identify exactly where that video was filmed using satellite imagery. So let's get into the first session, which is about starting research with the image of Earth search and identifying possible dating scammers. Often time research online starts with a simple photo or a video. And we always have those questions in our mind when we see this photo or video about what, what might be happening in this photo or where might it have been or, or when was it even taken or who is taking it and who is in it or who is responsible. These sorts of questions are really, start, are really difficult to start to answer when we just have a photo. Perhaps we could do a little bit of imagery analysis and try and identify what's in the photo so that we could hop onto Google and start to search. For instance, we can see a, a fire burning in the middle of this photo that you can see on the screen here. So maybe we could type in burning village or something like that. There seem to be palm trees. It might be a tropical area. It's quite dry. There's farmland. There's a, a little building that could be a school or something and there's mountains. So we could maybe use some of those, like a, a village fire near a tropical area or something like that. But these are really loosely ended search terms and, and are quite difficult to really narrow down and, and start to get some decent results. So something that I like to do is to do an image reverse search. And in this session, we're going to answer some of those questions using different types and different approaches to the image reverse search method. I really like doing image reverse searching in my field because it's an easy win to get more information or intelligence about an image or a video. I'm going to use this photo as a case study to show the different ways that we can have a look at a photo in image reverse searching. When I originally received this photo, the person told me it was taken in Nigeria. So let's see if it actually was taken in Nigeria and if it wasn't, where was it taken? So the first approach we're going to go through is a Google image of Earth search. And we can get there just from the Google homepage by clicking on the images tab. On Google images, we have this little icon right here, which allows us to search by image. So we're going to click that and we're going to upload our own image. Now the results are coming in and already we get an interesting surprise. So rather than the original context that this was sent to me in, in being in Nigeria, we get the result that it might actually be in Myanmar. And there's a few different ways that we can see that. So we can see it over here, but also you'll notice that in our search box here, we have this text, Myanmar, Burma. Now this is quite interesting. And, and this happens a lot with Google Image Reverse Search is that it'll often put in a text with the image. We can change that text as well. And we'll go to that in, in a minute. So let's scroll down and have a look at some of our results. Okay, so we can see that there's an overwhelming amount of results that say that this might be in Myanmar. Uh, one of these is a news article, and this is purple because I have visited it just before. So let's have a look at this one and see what this news article says. Okay, so the image doesn't seem to be in there, but it does appear on the page. So we'll have a look at this article. Okay, that's the same art picture that we were looking for that appears in this article. So already we have so much more information than what we started with when we just started with this image here. In this article, we have a small caption. So we have a date, we have a location, and we have a lot more information than what we started with when we were just looking at this image a few minutes ago. That's the power of a simple image of Earth search. And you can see that just from a few clicks, we've been able to find out so much more information. The benefit of using Google Image Reverse Search is that you can edit the text that comes with the photo and we can start to build a little list of search terms after that. So we could type in village, uh, we could type in human rights, accountability, and already from typing in those search terms, you can see that we've got some other search results 
and some different reports that might give us more information than what we originally started with as well. I like to restrict them down to a specific date of when I think the photo may have been taken. So we saw in one of the news articles that we just looked at, the photo may have been taken around May in 2020. So what we can do is under the Google tabs, we can click the tools option here. This will open up an option for us to either search by image or time. Now, if we click on that time, we have a, quite a few options, so past hour or 24 hours, which is good if you're doing uh, searches where you want recent imagery of an event where there might be a lot of old imagery or past year or past month. Something I really like to utilize a lot in research is custom range. This custom range option, we can pop in something such as May 2020, and this will give us all of the search results that are between the 1st of May 2020 and 31st of May 2020. And already we're seeing that our window of search results has been really narrowed down. Now these results seem to be more general, just with the keywords. We want the pages that include matching images. And we can see that we've really narrowed down some of our search results to being in that May 2020 period. So just by doing that, we have so much more information than what we originally started with when we were just looking at that image. We only had the context that it was taken in Nigeria. Now we found out it's in Myanmar. We found out a likely date, but we can verify that using satellite imagery in another session. And it's also started to identify exactly what was happening in that image as well. One of my other favorite tools to go through is the Yandex Image Reverse Search. And you can get there just by going to the Yandex page which uh, you can type in Yandex on any browser you are using at the moment and go to the images tab on the left here. And you'll have the same function that we just used in the Google image reverse search option as well, which is that little camera icon that we can click and upload a photo. So I'm going to go through that now and I'm going to upload a photo, the same photo that we're looking at for our Google results. And already we can see that it's uploaded the image. There's no text with it, but we can see the image there. There's a few other recommendations of some sort of similar images, specifically that smoke cloud coming out of a village. So we can see a lot of other search results. But what's interesting is that we get a very different range of search results. And you can see from what we had in Google over here with our search results, the ones in Yandex are completely different. And that's really interesting because from what, we, what we've started with here, where we just had this image before with no information, no reliable information whatsoever, we got some information from doing a Google image reverse search, and now we've done a Yandex image reverse search, we've just doubled that information picture in the space of five to 10 minutes. Again, just through a few simple, easy clicks. One of the reasons why I like Yandex a lot is because of first, we can do this option called the select crop area. Now this is really useful if you have images, for instance, if you're looking for brand names or if you're looking for specific faces, for example, and you want to identify what's in part of an image, you can use that simple select crop area rather than having to go into paint or preview or Photoshop or whatever image editing software you use and cutting down an image and then re-uploading that you can simply do that select crop area search and that will go through there. And we can just hit reset to again, search for that full image again. The other reason why I like Yandex so much is because not only does it use the image reverse search function, but it can also pull text out of an image. Now we don't have text in this image, but thankfully I have an image that we can use. And this is something written in Arabic. But why don't we give that a test on Yandex using that image text function. So what I'll do is I'll save this image and I'll run it into Yandex, just like I did with the last one. And let's see the results that we get. Okay, so we've got quite a few different results of similar text appearing on the screen, but the option that we have here is recognize text. So I'm going to click that and it's given me the text that appears in this photo here. Now there's a couple of things that I could do with that. Either I could copy that and run it in a Google search to see what results come out of that, or I could simply hit translate. Okay, so that's even translated that for me. So that's a really useful, unique function uh, in there if you have any text in your images that you can't understand or you wanna pull out automatically and, and search as well.
So you would have noticed that going back to this original image, the process I went through was to upload that image into both the Google Image Reverse Search icon or, or option here, as well as the Yandex Image Reverse Search option there. Now, does that mean for every website or every online image that you have to do that? You have to save the image and put it through there? No, it doesn't. So how can we automate that a little bit easier? Well, one way is if we go back to this news article here, in the popular Google Chrome browser, there's an option to right click and do an image reverse search. That's inbuilt in the Google Chrome browser. So we'll have a look at that. So if I right click and I go search Google for image, that will automatically put that image into the Google image reverse search option. That's really useful if you do this a lot and you repeatedly do image reverse searches rather than having to download the image and then go to the Google homepage and then upload it again. All we need to do is that simple right click function just like that and we can go into the search Google for image. A plugin that I'm going to go through and that I find really useful is the fake news debunker by Invid and WeVerify. And you can get there just by doing a search on your browser for Invid fake news plugin. What that does is it gives us a new option. So if I go back to my article and I right click on here, it'll give me an option to do a image reverse search through all of these platforms. So Google, Yandex, Bing, TinEye, Baidu and Reddit. Now if I click the all tab, it'll put that image and open up all of those tabs to do an image reverse search through all those platforms. Because if you remember rightly, Yandex gave me different results to what Google gave me. So it really pays to utilize some of these different platforms for an image reverse search function just because of the extra information you can get out of it. So I'll try that for Yandex right now. So you can see what happened after I right click that article and that photo. It's automatically popped it straight into Yandex so that I can use that image reverse search function so easily. So if you find yourself on social media or in a lot of different news websites and you're consistently doing an image reverse search or you're starting on that sort of research, give that plugin a go and it'll save you a lot more time just by having the right click feature to pop that into Yandex and then you can start cropping away and having a look at certain segments or using the text function that I showed previously previously as well. The fake news debunker plugin is also really useful as well because you have an image magnifier option and that will automatically put this photo into a website where you can start to really zoom into the photo to have a look at specific parts of that image. And that just saves you downloading the image and going through it on a photo platform, but rather you can actually just use it through the Chrome browser quite easy and efficient like that. More and more, a lot of different platforms are using their own image reverse search functions. So for example, Microsoft Bing has an image reverse search platform that you can use. And smaller organizations such as, for example, Alibaba also have one. So here is Alibaba. I've just put in a uh, search for shirts and I can upload an image to search for a specific type of product that I want to look for on that platform. For a use case example on the importance of doing an image reverse search, we can look no further than dating websites. Here is an account on Wonder Dating, which is called Lee James, who claims they are from Georgia. We can do an image reverse search on this photo here and see where else it pops up on the internet. For this case, I'm going to have a look at Yandex and let's see where, that, where else that photo is on the internet. Okay, so we've done a reverse search for this image on Yandex. We can go through and already we can see that there is a claim of someone being a dating scammer. We can see another dating website with Zachary Holmes. Uh, we can go through a little bit more. We can see that there's another dating scammer, another one, another one. There's our Lee James. And we can see that actually it's scammers with the pictures of Lieutenant Colonel Brian Denny, who probably isn't involved in dating websites whatsoever, but has had his image stolen and replicated over the internet throughout fake accounts. And this is a common thing for dating scams as well. We can have a look at another example. So here is Veronica Williams with a little bit more information on their profile. Claims they are from Cocoa Beach and has an introduction as well. Hi, I'm Veronica coming from a very moral home, respectful and very welcoming. So let's have a look. This time we can perhaps do a search on Google. 
We can see our Veronica Williams pops up, but also we have Fayada, California City. Uh, we have someone with a LinkedIn profile, dating sites in California, and we have some other ones as well. If we do that same search on Yandex, just to show the variation in results, we can see that there are a lot more accounts using that same image in their profile pictures. So we can see the importance in conducting a simple image reverse search throughout any field on the internet, uh, just to test the legitimacy of a photo, to look for its authenticity, to identify perhaps more information about those simple questions that we were talking about before, like who, what, where, and when. We also have a few different options of doing image reverse search through the mobile phone as well. The mobile phone that I'm using is an iPhone and one of the main features that we have of that is through the Google app. The Google app has an option called the Google Lens and we can see that option when we open up the home page and we can see it in the same place that we saw when we looked at the first idea of having a look at an image of our search. Just to this little icon here next to the microphone which looks like a little uh, photo feature. When we click on that and we upload a photo, for instance, I'm uploading a picture of my bun me that I made before. And when we go through that, it gives us an option to scroll through and have a look at the similar photos or, or, or exact photos if that photo was already online. And we can scroll through and have a look at the other images that have popped up there. And you can also press different parts of the image as well as cropping the image to a specific part of it. So if you're looking for a type of brand or if you're looking for a specific object in a photo, you can crop that photo down to that size. And that's all just from the mobile phone. Another app that has the image reverse search option on the phone is the Amazon browser. Through the Amazon application on Apple, you can use the same sort of function, which is the little camera icon located here in the search browser. And you can click that to upload either an image of a piece of clothing or something like that, or an item that's being sold on Amazon. And that'll have a look at similar options or the same option if it is available in the Amazon archive of images. And you can also scan items such as barcodes. So if you have a barcode and a photo that you want to see if that's available on Amazon, you can do that sort of same function uh, as well. In this session, we've gone through a lot of different techniques on how to do an image reverse search, namely how to do it on Google and Yandex or Bing or Alibaba or even Amazon on the phone and Google as well. We've also looked at how to make life a little bit easier by using those plugins just to double check pictures and, and get a little bit more information about where they're from or what they might be in their context as well. We've applied that to a case study that we thought was in Nigeria, but actually turned out to be Myanmar because of that image of our search. And we found a few little nasty fakes on dating websites as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this session. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please do like it and share it with someone else that might find it quite useful. And don't forget to click subscribe to stay updated. And thanks for watching.